Hi, it's me again. Um, I am hopping on for a quick update video, a little stitching and haul. Uh, it's been a while since I've been here. Um, I'm Rachel from Needle and Flax, if you haven't watched before. <laughs> I always say, hi, it's me. <laughs> um, let's see, last time I filmed a video was before I went to a hobby house retreat in September with Tanya Brockmeyer from Scarlet House and Vicki Jeanette for me to work press. Um, I filmed a video before that. Now it's been a while and this week I'm going to Hobby House again for a Hands Across the Sea retreat. So I thought, well, I'd better do a quick video, show you what I've been stitching on, give you a tiny shop update and what my plans are. And then after I get back and before Thanksgiving, which will be here before you know it, uh, maybe I can take a little longer chunk of time and show you some of my plans and even more of what I've been stitching because I only grabbed a few things to show you. My my time today is short. Um, so it's October 30th. Tomorrow will be Halloween. Uh, it's a Monday and I'm leaving Wednesday late in the afternoon for Hobby House. So I have quite, I have a few things that I definitely need to fit into my schedule in the next day and a half, but there's some work things, some big big jobs I should be working on that I'm just not going to have time to get finished and in the mail before I go. So before I get started on everything, um, well, I got to take a sip of my coffee. It's like 4.30 in the afternoon, but I'm drinking decaf. It's freezing. I'm wearing a scarf, you know. I'm going to do the quickest little minute shop update for you. So if you're a customer lately, I have been on my Instagram doing pre-orders for some of my linen colors. And my last pre-order I did was for Thornfield and um, Endora. I have a few other orders that were previous to that, that for one re I have like three orders where for one re reason or another, I didn't have the base, didn't have the color or have been waiting to be able to add the color that they ordered to a batch that's going to a shop. So there's a couple orders that have been waiting a little bit. But all of those pre-orders for Endora and Thornfield are dyed. I just don't think I'm going to have time to finish ironing and cutting and packaging and getting them in the mail right before I leave. So if you're waiting on an order, all of my linen orders are done. They're just waiting on the finishing touches to go in the mail. So. It's going to be another week. I'm hoping to totally finish all of my existing pre-orders up by the end of next week. I'll get back from Hobby House next Monday night. It usually takes me a good 24 hours to recover. I will be working, but I, I move slow. I don't sleep well at hotels, so I come home exhausted. And it takes me a couple days to really like shake off the whatever it is from traveling. It's a long drive. It's like a 10-hour drive. Um, so, you know, the beginning of next week, I'll be slow moving, but ready to kick it up into gear, um, and get everything posted and out by the weekend. So I just thought I would let you know that. But one of the other things is the way I've been doing it is when I do these pre-orders, it kind of guarantees that you get some of the colors and cuts and counts that you want. Um, I'm sending shop orders out every week and I have a ton of shop orders and some of them are quite large. But the shop owners tell me that the linen sells very quickly. So I know it's hard for customers to get what they're looking for, either a called for linen for a project or just something that they really like and they want to stash. So that's why I've been doing these pre-orders. What I wanted to mention is there's no real, um, they're not ready to go out when I do the pre-orders. So when you order that, just a PSA, you have to be willing to wait. And it's been taking me a good three weeks to get these out. Because like I said, I'm kind of, trying to jump back and forth between both both the shop orders and the the pre-orders at the same time. But if you want to be guaranteed that you'll get that linen, there's no linen shortage right now. Some of my linens, um, there's been a couple of counts on and off where I've had a little bit of a wait time, but not, not like COVID supply order issues. So um, since last year, last December, I had four new colors that I came up with. I've only released one and that is Sleeping Bear. I've done a couple pre-orders for that. That one's proving to be really popular. Probably before the end of the year, I'll do another pre-order for that color. Um, but I'm gonna try and at least get two more of the new colors released before Christmas. 
So I am going to be doing a few more pre-orders. I just want to get the previous ones mostly finished before I announce that. So if you want a new color, I'm probably going to announce two new two colors one of them being new to be a pre-order within the next week or so last time I did it at the hobby house retreat I was just sitting there and did it from my phone because I had everything loaded in my phone and I thought why not do the pre-orders I placed a linen order with the distributor on the phone did the pre-orders came home started dying so you know I could end up doing that this time I don't know but watch on my Instagram Needle and Flax on Instagram. If you would like to do any pre-orders for other colors, keep watching because I'll do it. And like I said, if you're willing to wait for it, you will get it. So, and if you don't want to wait, if you want it ready to ship, you're just going to have to find it at the shops. Sometimes on Instagram, I will write that it is ready to ship. If I write that, um, and of course charts are always ready to ship, but if I write that, then it ships within a couple days usually because I'm very fast at shipping when it's ready to go. <laughs> I don't want stuff sitting here. So that's my shop update. So watch for a new color. Um, and I'll probably do two colors on my next pre-order as well. One new, I think one new and one older one. I just haven't decided which one yet. So that's it. So I'll give you a little update on what I've been doing. Um, I can't even remember what I said last time. I think I might have even filmed before. I think my mother-in-law was here. And we were doing, um, we had to go to, we went to Ohio and we went to the Football Hall of Fame and we did the Rutherford B. Hayes Presidential Museum, which was fantastic, Spiegel Grove. I think I'm going to talk more about that on my First Ladies video. Every time I go somewhere and even comments online, I've gotten messages, people want my next First Ladies video. And every time I get on here, I say, I'm ready to do it. It's ready to go. It'll be any day. And it just doesn't happen. Um... I'm hoping, don't count on anything I say, I'm really hoping to film it before I leave for Hobby House. So I'm hoping either sometime tomorrow, Tuesday, Halloween, or um, Wednesday before I actually get in the car and leave. I may just sit down and take the time and do the video because Dolly needs to get out there. Dolly's going to be a two-part video and I'm going to do this one just a little different. I'm going to do a little bit of show and tell of some books and some things I've collected over the summer from some of the presidential museums, and I've also had some really cool gifts from people who have also gone to some historical sites and gotten me some, mailed me some cool stuff that I'm very excited about. Um, I got an Abigail Adams mug that I'm totally thrilled with. So I will be using that on the First Ladies video, the next one. So cross your fingers if you're watching for the First Ladies series. I think um, I will do part one of Dolly Madison um, in the next couple of days. If not, it'll be when I get back. <laughs> but it's just been eating at me. In fact, I put this regular stitching video off because I felt like I had to do the First Ladies one before I could do a regular video. And it just hasn't happened. I've been crazy, swamped, super busy. So that's it. So I did Ohio. Um, that was very fun. I will talk about that, like I said, a little bit about that on my presidents at the end of my Dolly Madison. Um... What else did I do? Okay, so I went to Hobby House. Lots of people that do floss tube have um, kind of gone over what they did or what they had. Um, but I'm going to go over it again because it was right at my fingertips. Actually, I forgot something I'm going to go grab. So I'm going to pause this. You're going to see a little glitch. So hang on. Okay, there's one really exciting thing I forgot to grab. Um, so Hobby House was fantastic. The... Um, Okay, it's really distracting me because I feel like the phone is like tilted, whatever. Just go like this if I'm crooked. <laughs> Watch me like this. Um, the projects that Tanya and Vicky had were fantastic. Hobby House was fun as usual. I didn't buy a ton of haul there. Um, you know, it's a very tiny store. They are opening a bigger location um, sometime around the first of the year. So next time I go back, I'm going back twice next October for the British Sampler, English, British Sampler, British Sampler, whatever it is, the Nicola Parkman one. <laughs> I'm doing that one, and two weeks later, they have the next one with Tanya and Vicky scheduled, and so I signed up for that one as well. So October is going to be weird, because I'm going to drive to New York, come home, turn around, and drive right back. 
But those are the only two scheduled retreats I have next year for now. I know I'm going to be hitting some shops over the summer, but I'm home for a while. Um, so I will be going back and it'll be fun to see the bigger shop. I didn't really need anything stitching wise when I went. Um, so I only hit the cross stitch shop one time. Um, last time I was there, I went multiple times and let me see what I got. Oh. I went multiple times last year. Um, like I said, this time I took my oldest daughter with me and um, had her, I went to the Hobby, her, ugh, Hobby House Woolworks and she went into the stitch shop. I had grabbed, I had to grab some linen for a friend and I grabbed one piece of linen, linen for myself. I grabbed 40 Count Dusty Road by Seraphim. It's a good, it's a good chunk. It was a good dye lot. So I grabbed that. Um, and she grabbed some silk for a, a sampler pattern, I think. So, oh, this was the other thing I got there. So I kind of decided because I don't really need a lot of stitching stuff. I mean, I have plenty of stitching stuff. Um, you know, it's there if I need something. But I kind of decided they carry shaker boxes and the first retreat that they had, we got one as our gift with our project. Um, so I thought, you know, that'd be kind of fun to buy a shaker box every time I go. Kind of have a hobby house shaker box collection. So that's what I did. I got the linen. I got a few silk threads and I grabbed one of their shaker boxes, a blue one. And then it's funny because I got home and I realized that every, sh I have a lot of shaker boxes and a lot of them are natural wood, but if they're ever colored, they're all blue and green. I tend to, I don't know. So I think when I go this week, I'm going to see if they, I'm either going to get a carrier because I watched Carol Saltbox and she had the cute little shaker carrier with all of her fall smalls like stuffed in it, which I thought was really cute. And I have shaker carriers and trays and stuff, but I use them for other things. So I'm either going to get a carrier like Carol, because who doesn't want to be like Carol? Um, or I'll get another, a shaker box in like a yellow or a red. Ketchup or mustard, one of the two. Because everyone I have is blue or green, even though I love them. When I stack them, they're kind of, they're all kind of the same color. So I need to get some other colors mixed in there but those shaker boxes they sell are really nice and I think they have them online too you don't have to be in person to buy their shaker boxes it's a local guy that does them and they're fantastic so I got that and I went over to the wool shop I got um I don't even know what I got there I just brought one thing that I got um I got a couple of pin cushions and some handmade items, but this was really cute. They had a gal that had a bunch of wood stuff. And so I got this little wool, uh, wool bird and it's on a little distressed candlestick. I thought he was really cute. Kind of fallish. Actually, I'll keep this out all year, but I thought that was kind of cute. So I got that at Hobby House Wool Works. And that's it. I didn't really do a lot of big purchases because um, I knew I'd be back you know, just a month later. And so I didn't want to go crazy. I mean, I'm not made of money people. <laughs> so this time I am, uh, going to definitely hit the wool shop because, uh, my friend Barry from stitch folk, she went to the primitive, uh, needle retreat, the primitive needle art retreat that hobby house hosted. That was um, you know, like Maggie Bonanami and Lisa Primson Greenway was one of the organizers. She went there and she was sending pictures and stuff while she was there. She looked like she had a great time. And she was doing punch needle. She had not done it before. And so I kind of debated with some friends whether to get back into punch needle or to start rug hooking. Like, I have time for this. Um, and I kind of thought I was going to go and buy a rug hooking kit um, when I'm there this week. And I've backed off. I'm going to save that for next year. Um, but I thought, well, I can go back into punch needle because I used to do punch needle in the early 2000s quite a bit. So I ordered from the old tattered flag in New York and I did get a pattern, which I'm going to show you. And I got a new punch needle. Um, and then they also have like a table stand. I've always done it with the Morgan hoop, but they have a table stand. 
So I have the Morgan hoop. I have the table stand. I now have a punch needle. I'm probably going to also buy the smart punch because I've never tried that. Hobby House carries that one. Um, but I ordered from the old tattered flag a couple of patterns. And I think this one over the holidays is one that I'm going to possibly punch a Christmas one. I gotta practice a little bit before I dip into this. But they have some really cute kits. So it's oldtatteredflag.com. If I remember, I'll put the little link below. So anyway, um, I met up with friends at Hobby House. Uh, you may have seen, if you watch Brenda and Laura, they described our table as the naughty table. Um, I believe they called me the head naughty. I don't know. I got a lot of requests for people sitting with me at other retreats <laughs> after being called head naughty. Um, I'm kind of proud because I've never been called head naughty. Um, <laughs> there was an open bar, but I was not drunk. I have a high tolerance for alcohol. At least hard alcohol. It doesn't even like phase me. <laughs> but it was very fun. Um, so we had some drinks and we relaxed and we laughed harder than I've laughed in a long time. Um, I think a hands across the sea retreat is not necessarily the same vibe. It's a little more learny, so it's going to be fun, but it's not going to probably be as raucous. I mean, we were a loud table. In fact, you know, when we got there, I think if you watch, okay, so my friend Liz has a new floss tube channel and she's the wandering stitcher. You got to go over and follow her. So she just did a video this week and she talked about, she was at the naughty table um, and she talked about Hobby House the first night. Um, she just had this funny story. We were at opposite ends of a table and she was sitting next to Karen and Bren from Fox and Rabbit. They all hit it off fantastic. They just loved Liz and we loved meeting them. I really liked Bren and Karen quite a bit. They are just fantastic. Um, but Liz was at the end of the table causing a commotion. She can't fit on the bar stool. She tossed some cornbread at Bren groped his leg inappropriately. She had that debacle the first night. The first day at the retreat, I was reaching on my table and like pinched my arm. I think it was on a light. See, now I can't even remember. It was probably the drinking. I, why I can't remember. Just kidding. Um, the room is like dead silent and I bursted out a mother you know what -er. And a couple ladies at the tables next to, I heard some audible gasping. <gasps> I'm like this. <laughs> so, you know, that was like the next day I'm just throwing out the cuss words and it was bad. It was bad. Something like that happens to me at every retreat. I do something just that I wish I didn't. So, you know, she's tossing cornbread and groping strangers and I'm, you know, sounding like a sailor and anyway, we just had a ton of fun. And we're going to have fun again because we're all getting back together and going to the retreat again next fall. And some of the naughty table will be at Hobby House this week. So, you know, I'm hoping to have a good time again. I can't see why I wouldn't because I have every time I've hung out with my friends and met new people and all that stuff. So the first night um, of the retreat before my mother, you know, water moment, um, we got, this was our gift, was a Hobby House um, tote bag. Oh, here we go. It's got the logo. It's got a leather bottom, leather handles. I think there was black or red. I chose a red one. Actually, I can't remember if we chose or if they just hand. I think we got to choose. I choose chose a red one. The black was really nice too. Um, the first night, let me look in here. What's in here? The first night, Tanya had this kit, which this was fun. I did the linen for these kits, but I did not know what the charts were. Normally, when a designer um, charts using my linen, they will send me a free chart. Some of the designers I'm friendly with and they text me and we chat about it and they show me their progress when they're stitching models or show me antiques and I get so excited when somebody's using my linen for a model just because as a stitcher I like getting the patterns and seeing them and stuff but this time Tanya used my linen for both of her projects 
and I didn't know what they were. So it was very fun as a surprise. But this was the little um, pillow, and this was done on Dolly Madison, which is a needle and flax linen. So we got a little kit for that. Um, Vicky's project was done on Fox and Rabbit, and I have to say, uh, her big project was on hog bristle. I'm not going to pull out the linen, but ooh, it was a really good batch of hog bristle. I mean, I have quite a few pieces of hog bristle, but Bren, this, whatever he did to this batch, it was like perfection. It's a gorgeous piece of hog bristle. Not that the other ones aren't, but this one was particularly good. You know, there's variations on stuff. So Vicky, for the first night, gave us... I believe this is it. She gave us this little pattern and a piece of perforated paper to stitch it on. And she said, um, they gave us the threads too. And she said, hold on to it because it's going to go with something at the end of the retreat. At the end of the retreat, we got this little tray, which has been in my bag since I have not had time to even go through this stuff. So it's like a little... You know, it snaps. They had these, Tanya and Vicky had these made for us. And then this pattern, and some people have stitched it, you may have seen it, but this pattern goes, you can pop the perforated paper right into this, which is so cute. It was so cute. A lot of people stitched this that weekend and were done with it. It was very quick. Um, so, what else did I get? Oh, when I was there, I'm just loading up on Fox and Rabbit Lane. Sylvia from Running with Needles and Scissors. She and I did a little trade. She had some extra ballet slipper, and she had seen me talking about wanting some ballet slipper from Fox and Rabbit. And she messaged me and was like, hey, you want to do a trade? So I gave her some of my linen, and she brought me this linen that I want. So who doesn't love trading linen and not, you know, cost money, but I... The trade was fun. So we did that. She also brought me, I don't have both of them here. Sylvia brought me my copies. Um, she had two releases at the online market this summer that were on my linen. And I don't have both of the patterns here. One was like a little tombstone. It's really cute. Um, and she's doing a tombstone series. That was on Eastwick. And she brought me this, which is also on... Dolly Madison, which this one I was really pumped about. It's called My Father's House. And she had shown me, I think she had shown me, somebody had texted me pictures of her stitching the model. She had shown it to me when it was done, right before it was released. And it's super pretty. The picture doesn't do it justice. But this, I can't wait to stitch this one day. That I'm definitely stitching, because I love a big house. So the two projects that we got, oh, and Vicki had these too, and I don't remember when we got these. They are ornaments that you could do on the perforated paper as well. So we got a big sheet of perforated paper and then the ornament pattern and like felt and stuff to finish it and that pattern for the insert. Um, what else did we get? I left something else. I left Tanya's. And I actually started it. So I'm going to pause again. Uh, I knew this would be a mess. Take a breath. All right. Hold on one sec. All right. I forgot a whole pile of stuff. So I think Vicki, uh, Tanya went first. And believe it or not, my goal was to beat the seven stitches I've gotten in at a retreat. That's my maximum. And my goal was to stitch more than that, and I actually did. Not only did I stitch at the hotel with the friends before the retreat started, but I was stitching during the retreat. I mean, I was all over the place. This uh, was Tanya's. It's amazing. Red Manor Sampler. house. Uh, it's done in 103 and it's on 40 count dirty teacup. Again, I dyed this one in for her, but I never knew what the pattern was. So I was pumped to see what she was bringing. And I actually got a little bit done. I don't love pre-cut linen. Um, 
I'm someone that kind of likes a lot of extra and just going for it in the upper left hand corner. But of course, when you get a kit like this, it is um, pre-cut. And so I started in the middle just because there was sort of blank space in the upper left and I didn't want to take the time. So um, I started in the middle and so I started that center motif and part of the house. And I started these little chimney pieces. I'm gonna go closer, right? The red that she gave us, I don't even know, I think I might've taken it out of here. The model to me in person looked more like a burgundy red and the red that was in the kit was a little more of a cherry red. And so I stitched those two um, chimneys and I'm like, mm, I don't really love it. So I swapped out the red and I'm gonna pick out those chimneys. Um, and I am going to stitch them with a Verisois 493. I think that's the one I swapped it for. Oh, hold on one sec. Hi, hi, hi. Okay, <laughs> I'm back. It's just, oh, I feel like I can't do these videos without a million interruptions. This is why I have not done Dolly yet. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to swap out the 103. I think I did. I think I pulled out the original red just so I wouldn't get them confused and go a little more burgundy. That's a very fun stitch. I'm going to keep going with that this year. Um, so we got that. I think what was fun about this retreat is there were two designers, two projects, and I don't know which one I was more excited about. They were both just right up my alley. The Needlework Press project. This is another one where I, oh, wrong, wrong pattern. I don't think the photo does it justice. And even the photos that I know a lot of people were taking of the antique and the model, it's like stunning in person. It's not huge. It's called Hannah Phillips, 1826. The colors in it are just oh, so good. And I cannot wait to stitch this. You can do, there's an original verse that was on the um, sampler that I believe is over one. Or you could do this altered version where she just put like an alphabet in there. I'm going to do the antique version. I'm going to do the over one, I think. I think. Because the alphabet she put in there is adorable. Vicky's really good with like, she loves fonts. Like she has a lot of samplers with fonts. So like her putting the alphabet in there, it looks perfect. But we'll see. We'll see where my mood takes me. I would love to stitch both of these this year. In my fancy project bag. <laughs> um, yeah. So, okay. So when we were there, um, one of the people at my naughty table, I, we did get a lot of gifts and I know, I think Brenda and Laura, I think Karen Combs, there's a couple of people that were at the retreat that do videos that showed all of the fun little gifts that people leave at the table. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Although I love those gifts. I love those little treats. I wish I was put together enough to really get together 150 little treats for people to pass out at tables. I'm not good at that. One day I'll get my stuff together and have take the time and really wow people with a little treat at their seat, but I haven't been able to do that. So there was a lot of little treats that people gave. Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Sylvia running with needles and scissors. She also made me like a big, she made a couple of us like a big strawberry pin cushion. That's amazing. I may show that on my next video. But my friend Liz, the wandering stitcher, she brought me a fun treat. She had gone this summer, right around the time that I was going to Ohio, she went to Boston um, with her family, her dad and her stepmom and her husband and kids and all that. And they did Salem and they did Boston and all this. So anyway, she kept texting me and calling me when she was on um, her trip this summer. And she knows I like American history. So she just kept seeing all these things that I would love. And in fact, gave me the heads up on some history t-shirts and things that I would want. And so I actually ordered some, but she brought me a gift to the Hobby House Retreat from the Boston Tea Party Museum. 
So she brought me this adorable bag, time for time to party, which is so cute. And I used this the whole weekend. Well, I swapped and used this on the weekend. She brought me John Adams notebook. She also brought me some tea, which is already in my cabinet. And she brought me this cute, she knows I love souvenir junk. Um, the Tea Party Times, a special issue where I can read about dropping the tea. So I haven't even looked at this yet, but she knows that's, oh, look at this. A storm is brewing. <laughs> this is why Americans are coffee drinkers. <laughs> anyway. So she brought me that treat. That was really fun. Um, I feel like there was something else in here too that I'm not remembering. That was very fun. During the retreat, um, they played some games and they had a like, how well do you know the designer? And they did like a quiz. I think it was 20 questions and they were questions about Vicki and Tanya. And they were just oddball questions like, what is Tanya's favorite tree? Like things that like really nobody would ever know. And then they had a couple of gifts and I got 15 out of 20. Tanya's even like, how did you do that? <laughs> Cause it's not like I know her that well. Um, I'm just good at that stuff. I just got a sense, I got an instinct. I'm a good, and it was multiple choice. So I'm good at that. So I had the most and I got to pick a gift. They were wrapped and the gift that I picked was one that Tanya made. And she made one of her little jewelry cases, the little Amazon cases. This is so cool. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll take this to Hobby House this week. So, she's got this on the inside. A little trim. A little needle minder. And a little, um, I think that's a Martha Evans. Let me see. Martha Evans. Which is super cute. I think I bought one of those from... I like sampling of memories when there was the stitch along for Brenda's birthday and I think I might have bought bought one that was different it's a little bigger I think Tanya might have made this one but that sampler was on my linen too so that was kind of fun so yeah I won I won the big gift even with my naughty table and my potty mouth you know I did all right so that was it. After I came home, I went back to work for a bit and Liz, need I say again, the wandering stitcher, <laughs> she decided to come up for a visit. Uh, so she was here a couple weeks ago and we just played tourist in Northern Michigan. We didn't get any stitching done. We were both toting around our stitching. Um, she was here from a Saturday to a Monday. So for three, not three full days, um, basically two full days, half a day Saturday, all day Sunday and half a day. Uh, Monday, we uh, bumped around Northern Michigan and she had a ton of fun and I had a ton of fun playing tourist. Um, she was cracking up because I called the tourists fudgies, which is what we call them because they come up here and eat fudge. And um, she had never heard that and thought that was hilarious. And then I had to convince her to buy some fudge to take home, which she did say was delicious. Um, but you can watch, she talks a little bit about coming up for a visit, um, on her video. Um, so she's at the wandering stitcher on Instagram and she's the wandering stitcher on YouTube. Now she's not going to do videos on a regular schedule. So my suggestion is when I have videos, sorry, I keep looking, it sounds like someone's here. When I follow people, um, that do videos that aren't on a regular schedule, I usually subscribe. And then I usually hit the notification bell because I don't know when to look for them. And I follow enough people that sometimes those videos I like to watch get lost in the feed. So my suggestion is to go over and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Her videos are really good. She just uploaded her first one. She's more of a stitcher than like a haul person. Um, she's been doing, she really does stitching on a regular basis. She's a 46 count stitcher. And she's always changing colors on like everything. And she's very funny. So she's a good one to watch because it's always interesting to see what she's changed color-wise on a pattern. Um, 
you know, and then on 46, some of these things are teeny tiny. Her last video, she did the cutest, teeniest, tiny little shepherd's bush stocking. So I think her first video went really well and she's going to be a fun one to watch. So I just wanted to mention to go watch her. I have a whole other list of floss tube people that I wanted to mention. I didn't write it down. So like I said, my next video, I'm going to take a little more time and do a couple of shout outs for people that I think you should go watch because I have a little, a little list. Um, but I did want to mention Liz because we were at Hobby House and then she was here in Northern Michigan and we just had a ton of fun. Um, so then she left and I've been working. One of the things I did since my last video was when I was in Ohio and went to the Rutherford B. Hayes um, historical home, Spiegel Grove and museum. I went to the museum too. Um, I stopped at Little Creek Needleworks in Canton, Ohio. Now I didn't bring everything that I bought there. I bought some wood pieces. Um, Patty is the owner and her husband does these amazing wood pieces. Um, like I got a pipe box, a wood pipe box with an insert to do, like put stitching in. Um, he had horn books, some gorgeous horn books. There was a huge one with like a whale tail top that I really wanted, but I had to be careful. I had to just be careful of what I was spending. Um, it's sampler based. They had an amazing model of Mahala Barber by um, Fox and Rabbit that I was just like, holy cow, I got to stitch this. It was gorgeous. It was on 36 count. It was huge. Her shop, um, it's very, it's tiny. There's a stitching room there. I got to meet a couple of stitchers who also were at Hobby House for the weekend. Hello, ladies. Um, it's not a huge shop, but she has more than enough in there that it is worth going out of your way to stop there. She is pretty sampler based. So she had a lot of samplers, um, a lot of like Brenda Gervais, Plum Street, like kind of all the things that we all stitch, right? If you're watching this, your style is Little Creek Needleworks. Um, and there's a stitching room that's open when she's open. So you can just take your stuff in there and stitch. So if you're ever in Ohio, I highly recommend going to Little Creek Needleworks. In fact, if I had the time, this time going through Ohio and going from Hobby House home to Michigan, I would take a detour and stop there, but I'm just not going to have time. Um, my daughters are going with me and we are stopping at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame on the way home. <laughs> my middle daughter's got to see the Beatles exhibit before it's gone in December, so... I am this summer probably going to drive down just to do some antique and thrift shopping and hit Little Creek Needleworks because that store was fun. So I highly recommend it. So when I was there, and this was like in August, so we're going way back. It's not like I won the lottery and I'm buying stuff left and right. This is why I have, this is why I have a haul video this time um, because it's been a while. So when I was there, she had the newer, it was a, well, that time it was a newer Teresa Kogut. Um, I bought that one because that one I didn't have. I bought Cardan Antiques and Needlework Mary Tribute 1820. I think I might've already had this one, but I wasn't sure. And since I was there, I just grabbed it. And if I do end up having this already, I will usually, I will probably give it away. But I'm going to have to check. I love this sampler. Look at that. So good. So I got that. I got Parents Love by Samplers Not Forgotten. You know I love a pastoral scene. So I got that one. At this time, at that time, that was when Brenda Gervais, this was the first, I was looking for them online and a lot of places hadn't gotten them yet, but Little Creek Needleworks had the new Brenda Gervais Halloween ones. And, you know, my hope at that time was, oh, I'll start these and have them done by Halloween. And I don't even have the threads. And then I got this Lottie Da, and they were not ashamed. I used to do a lot of Lottie Da back in the day, like early, early 2000s. I did a lot of Lottie Da and I just haven't been doing hers lately and she has fantastic patterns so I picked this one up and that was that um so what have I been stitching on I'm gonna have to wrap this up 
So this is one of the things I took to the retreat that I was working on. And this is Teresa Kogut. Remember me, this was a Patreon chart, but it is also, you can actually purchase it as a printed chart now. And I worked on this a bit. I am stitching, oh, stitching this in the called for cottons on needle and flax hawthorn. And I actually worked on this at the retreat before we got our kits. So I don't know if you, it's so wrinkled. Oh, good Lord. I'm going to show this next time and I'm going to iron it just so you can see what I've been doing. So yeah, got a little progress on that. I don't get much stitching time. So anytime I even get an hour showing you guys doesn't look like a lot of progress, but I feel very accomplished when I get a few more stitches into something. I hope I can really make progress on this this year because I love this piece and this is a if I say so myself, this was a good batch of Hawthorne. I love the cut that I cut for it. So I did that. Um, at some point, Laura, I think it was two videos ago, she was talking about, okay, Tanya Brockmeyer had posted a Prairie Schooler finish. And it was one of the little, it was like a little four square Halloween. This was like maybe a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago. And Laura from Brenda and Laura had seen it and it inspired her to pull out her Prairie Schooler. I thought the same thing. I saw that picture. Prairie Schooler's always been one of my favorites. I've stitched a ton of Prairie Schooler. In fact, the one that Tanya posted, I have finished and my daughter has it at her apartment for, for her fall decor. So I was like, what, what Prairie Schooler do I have that I could pull out? And I was in the mood again at the time for Halloween. I started this a few years ago. And it is When Witches Go Riding. And this is the one I think that Tanya had um, shown that she had finished. And I've already stitched that, but I never finished this one. And I think... Why is my cat? Um, I think this is the one that Laura had pulled out. That she's like, oh, I haven't worked on that forever. Well, neither had I. So I just did a couple of things on it. Obviously, it's not going to be done. I may over the winter just finish this. This is just a white Zweigart 32. My intent was to stitch it and then maybe do some distressing, like some walnut ink or a tea dye over it because it's just DMC. Um, so I worked a little bit on that. Maybe just a couple nights when I was inspired. But Prairie Schoolers work up so fast and I love this one. So who knows, maybe tomorrow night, my son's going trick or treating, he's 15, but you know, I'm one of those believers that I like the big kids that do it. My girls did it till he's a sophomore. They did it till they were about sophomores. I trick or treated till I was a sophomore. And as long as they're being respectful of the little kids, you know what? It's good, clean fun. They just want to be kids. They're dressing up. My son is Scooby-Doo. Um, his friend is going to be Shaggy. You know, it's a lot better than other things they could be do. They're just playing around like little kids. And as long as they're behaving, I am all for it. I would much rather have them doing that. In fact, I have to fix his costume. That just reminded me. He is Scooby-Doo, and I got him an adult Scooby-Doo costume. Scooby-Doo's tail looks like an inappropriate appendage on a dog. Like, just something that should be covered up. It just hangs there, this tail. And... <laughs> He tried it on and I about lost it. And so I think tonight or maybe tomorrow morning, I gotta try and run like a wire through that tail so that it stands up and doesn't hang because it's just not a good look. Oh, it's not a good look at all. Um, so that's another thing on my list I've got to do. And if I can't, he told me you are cutting that tail off. I am not wearing that costume like that. And I don't blame him. He will just get crucified. I'm going to have to do that tonight because I think we want it to school. Ugh. Okay. Well, we're going to hurry up. I'm just going to show you a couple more things. Um, I've got a couple other stitching starts I did. But one of the other things I got was I also got two, well, I got three of the newer Teresa Kogut books. 
I got Harvest Friendship, which I love. Love that. Now these, some of these have like Patreon charts, but they're not all Patreon charts. So even though I'm a member of Patreon and may have gotten some of these for free, um, a lot of times there's new, there's patterns that we didn't get on Patreon. And some of them have no Patreon charts in it. So I got this one. And this cover picture was a Patreon free chart. Dodger Charles. Okay. Um, and then Hello Autumn. This one's so cute. I love that one. And there's a bunch of... I love this one. Autumnal Bliss. I think this one was a Patreon. The cover one wasn't, but I think this one might have been. Isn't that cute? So, next year. And this turkey. Oh my gosh. Folksy Thomas. I mean, how cute is he? I just love that folk art look that Teresa does. So this one I just started last night because I want to take this one with me to Hobby House because I think that this is one that has big enough blocks of color and not too many color changes where I can maybe get some progress. I about died when she showed this came out. So I ordered this and I ordered this these from Teresa Koga. When you're a member of her Patreon, you get a discount code for her Etsy shop. So once she had all these new releases and she had the coupon code for October, I was like, Hey, I might as well get a little discount on it. At least it covers shipping. Um, dwelling place. I love this. It's like a red, white, and blue sampler without being patriotic. And she did a little pastoral scene. So I started this last night. The other thing in here I don't even have all the threads. I think I'm just doing all DMC. She only has like two overdies in here and I don't, I don't have them. I love this pin cushion. How cute is that? And this one's cute too. Look at that. Sometimes you get these books and then you don't all have patterns that you'd want to stitch all of them. There's just one or two, but that one I do all three of those. So here's the colors. I started this during, um, sorry, my cat is climbing on my cross stitch. Um, oh, he told my cat Dodger. Um, Sunday night football. My son wanted to watch Sunday night football. So I put all the threads on thread drops. So these are the colors. And Again, wrinkled linen. I'm going to do this on needle and flax cornfield. So all I got, I did the, the, I just started the corner of the, ah. so that's what I've started. If I get a chance tonight or tomorrow night during Halloween or in the hotel at night before I get to Hobby House, I'm going to try and make a little progress on this and work on this while I'm at the hands across the tree, the sea retreat. I have two other things I'm probably going to take with me, but this one I'm really pumped about. And this is in a, this is actually in a project bag. This was a gift from a friend. How cute is that? It's a big one. That's all puffy. And the other thing that I started is I'm already, I'm beyond fall. I'm into Christmas. I want to start stitching Christmas. Right now I'm in the mood for Christmas and samplers. I always am too late to the game. Nothing I'm doing for Christmas will be finished by Christmas, but I'm in that mood. So I thought, well, why don't I start something, not finish one of my things from last year, of course, or the last few years, but why not pick something new to work on a lot during this season? So I picked, of course, a doozy, This Joyous Season by Plum Street. And I started that the other night. I originally thought, well, I can get, I thought, I'll take this to Hobby House because I'll just get this basket done and then maybe start to outline the roof. Well, then, do you know how long repeat the sounding joy is? That is going to take a while. So I started this on needle and, I'm doing all my own linens, I guess. Needle and flax sleeping bear. So this is one of the new colors. You're not going to be able to see the right color. So I got repeat and one of the, I don't know, pomegranate balls. <laughs> I don't know. 
what I think it might be a pomegranate. I got repeat. I still have the sounding joy to finish. It's going to take a while. There's no way I'm going to get anywhere near that roof for a bit. The way, the amount of time I get to stitch, but who knows? I may take that with me. I may just leave that for when I get home. Okay. I need to get down. Okay. So that's kind of the update. That's what's been going on. Like I said, I hope I can get to Dolly in the next day and a half. Um, okay, this is 50 minutes, so it's not as short as I thought. It always feels like, I don't know, like I don't have a lot to show. A video is going to be short. It ends up being just long enough. I know I talked incredibly fast during this video, but like I said, I'm just trying to squeeze it in. My last couple of videos have been kind of flat because... I just haven't taken the time and tried to squeeze them in between other stuff. So I'm going to try and be back and hopefully you see a Dolly Madison, um, first ladies. Have I been saying first ladies or first wives? I don't know. First housewives, <laughs> the first lady series. Um, I'm hoping you're going to see Dolly within the next few days. I don't know how long it'll take to upload. And if not, you will see it within the next two weeks again. Don't count on anything I say, because I'm just a big fat liar. You know, I can be a mother you know what -er sometimes. Um, <laughs> so, when I get back from Hobby House, I will update you on everything and kind of let you know what I get there and what happened and what my plans are for Christmas stitching and maybe some plans for the new year, because I'm hoping to get some stitching done over the holidays and take a couple days off during the holidays, too. So that's it for now, and hope you have a lovely week filled with lots of stitching, and um, happy Halloween. Bye.